It is February the 25th, 2023, and this is The Future of Photography. The Future of Photography. And back with another episode, here is Chris, there's Adrian and Jeremiah. Hello. Hello. Sorry I wasn't here last week. <laughs> That's okay. We had plenty of fun without you. We had... Such a good episode about folios. Um, yeah, so you missed a lot, but that's okay. You can, I, I did, Richard although I did have a lot of gelato, there, so that's you know, mm, very, very that's happy. okay. Yeah, sounds like a sounds like a that made up nicely for us not being around. Ah, uh, okay, and of course, as we this by the way, this is our two hundred and fiftieth episode. Is it just oh, a little wow. like? Okay. Ooh, Bit, yeah. a bit, little bit of a celebration here um, and uh, to celebrate the episode and because you haven't been here last week Adrian we made you bring a topic so what did you bring <laughs> us yeah so this uh, I, I, I had this idea and uh, for a discussion because um, I've been planning um, I've been planning some photo meetups through the year yeah because I uh, I have to plan those in advance so I can catch up with some friends sometimes that's photo walk sometimes it's just catching up with friends for a few drinks or whatever and I had this idea for something I thought okay well what if I got together with just a small group of friends but I took a printer right and maybe we do a photo walk or something like that but then we sit we, we find a cafe or a bar or something you know uh, borrow a little electricity uh, and you know print a few prints out and and share you know do a bit of a sort of live in the day print swap kind of thing just for fun see 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 what that does and that got me thinking about you know well workflows end to end isn't it and our toys are end to end therefore our investments are end to end in the workflow and a lot of us really focus on the capture part of uh yeah because that's the fun part of photography it's you go the out only you have fun this part of photography is it so my <laughs> well, challenge for some for us people today, it is <laughs> so my, my challenge for us today is is should we be spending more on the printing element of the workflow than the camera ca and the capture element of, of our work yes Okay, well, there we go. That was episode 250. <laughs> Jeremiah, has, <laughs> Jeremiah has the answer, which is great. <laughs> so, End of discussion. Let me, let me venture a guess. I guess um, if you look at, the, at how much weight people give to the different parts of the workflow, you will find a very, very widespread of some people like the capture and never do anything with their photos. I've met these people. Um, there's people who spend all the time editing and 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 finishing and and doing post processing on their pictures. There's people who spend uh, an enormous amount of time getting everything look beautiful online. And then there's people who love to print and make them into physical things. And if you ask twenty photographers, you get twenty different uh, spreads here. So. You do, um, and and everybody everybody has a different view, and you can find any you know uh, any number of uh, you know people prepared to give advice, of course, based on their own needs and their own point of view, um, and, and it's quite often you know that uh, one of the things I do see quite often is you know when you're first starting out, don't spend all your money on the camera because you'll need some lenses and you might need. Uh, a bag and you might need some lighting and and things or a tripod and stuff like that but still all of that is is at the capture end isn't it is it is, isn't it um, go ahead no I, I, I was about to say there is a lot of that at the capture end and i have i have a suspicion that it changes over the years that you deal with photography i, I have the suspicion that as a, as a beginning photographer you might put a lot more emphasis on the on the start of the workflow and the longer you do it the more your your emphasis uh, shifts towards the later stages i guess ah, I'm not sure I mean, interesting i think one of the fundamental questions any photographer has to ask him or herself is uh, what is your final intention why do you take pictures what's what's the reason you take pictures if you are you know uh someone whose sole purpose is to post on instagram 
um, there's little reason to use anything other than an iPhone or a very simple, inexpensive camera, since one can achieve virtual sharpness with pretty much any device for capture in a small screen environment. So it doesn't really matter. If you have an intention of using those images commercially, which could be in magazines or in a print or for billboards, um, the capture will be um, important to your clients. There will be very strict guidelines about quality, DPI, all of that stuff, and uh, how big you can blow it up. If you're exhibiting your work in a gallery, um, there are conventions of archival expectations. Uh, if you're taking pictures to just show your family, that's another way of outputting it. They don't have to be huge. They could be small. They could be in a photo book that you could self-publish. All of these are really based on what the photographer really wants at the end. But there is something surprising when a amateur photographer, having taken a picture on their iPhone, is given the tools or aided in taking that picture, upresing it to a significant proportion, adjusting and editing the tonalities in an extreme or, you know, delicate way, and then outputting that as a really beautiful fine art print that will really, I think, blow the mind of the original photographer if that person has never experienced what their work can really look like on a printed piece of fine paper. So the, these are, are processes that I think are very wor well worth uh, discussing. And I, I, you know, I jumped in with my answer, but if you had a budget of, let's say $2,000 uh, to get a camera, and a printer. What would you do? Would you spend $1,800 on the latest Fuji, you know, with a lens and a nice camera bag and a couple of chips, and then whatever, a little kind of amateur Canon or Epson or, you know, whatever, or go to the drugstore or whoever makes prints now. Um, I personally would say spend $1,000 on your camera and $1,000 on your printer. That's what I would do right off the bat. Because a good printer, and that's not a great printer, that's a good printer. A good printer can make prints on a lesser camera much more easy than a great camera can make good prints on a terrible printer. And you can learn a lot about your photography through making prints. Okay, I'm Very going to pick true. up on that last point, actually, because a lot of what you've talked about there is it, it falls into the realms of technical fidelity. But the last <clears throat> bit that you talked about was, you, you mentioned there, was learning about your photography. So I I, I completely agree um, that where, when you, you print, it brings to uh, a whole new dimension of, of learning. And I think new dimension of, of both art and craft, right, uh, to, to the images that we make. Uh, because, yeah, there's, there's, and there may be, there may be a lot of faffing around when you print. There may be a lot of, uh, there may be a lot of uh, development prints and you think, you get the print, you think, okay, well, I'm not quite sure about that. So you make some adjustments and things like that. As even if you have the most sophisticated software and you've got all your, your color profiles set up, you know, you know, there are going to be occasions when your soft proofing in the computer screen isn't going to match, you know, isn't going to deliver you what you want in the, in, in the final print. Um, but I think that is that is a huge learning experience and uh, yeah, a very valid one as well. And sometimes you can get some some surprises. So I 
I think for the art, for me, and for the learning of the craft, I think printing is is an awesome thing. Um, and, and I'll be the first to put my hand up and say, I don't do enough printing. I'm trying to do more, <laughs> um, but, I know, but I'll be the first person to say I don't do enough. And I, one of the things I want to do more this year is more printing of higher quality at home, you know, doing it myself, doing the learning rather than just sort of uploading it to a, a printing service and, and getting prints back. And um, the technical thing is interesting, isn't it? Because, you know, having recently bought a whole new camera system for well under a thousand pounds, um, albeit, you know, a 10 year old one inch sensor camera system, um, I'd be perfectly happy. Yeah, I've done a print, actually. In fact, I've got one just beside me. I, I won't get it because I probably can't get it without bashing the microphone and making a load of noise. But a, a print um, uh, on, because uh, I have an A4 printer, so a print, yeah, it's about an 8x10 print. Um, uh, and that uh, has come out very nicely from a 10-year-old 10 megapixel camera. So I'm to- I think, Jeremy, I, I, I think if people can can be interested and have the intent to learn i think you're you're probably right although i don't think i've ever owned a printer that cost a thousand pounds maybe 300 pounds but so so for for those listening who um who haven't really done any printing um my personal experience and i've i've done i've done several years of a lot of printing at home with very sophisticated printers and inks and things and and papers um my personal experience is that, yep, if you want to start that, then it can become a very technical thing because you will, mm. especially when it comes to color management, you will have to learn a lot of different things and how the camera and the computer and the printer and the media that you print on uh, play together. So that's, if, that's if a, that is important to your creative, if process. that's important to you, and 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 the, and that's why I'm saying maybe you don't need to spend the thousand bucks because you might already have something that works. So what I've done here is well, first of all, since since then, I haven't printed much here because I didn't have a need to print a lot. And then what happens with inkjet printers is they dry up and then you have uh, more cost than you want to in terms of uh, fixing things and getting the inks to run again, that kind of stuff. So for me, that was that was I got to a point where I said, oh, let me work with someone who does it professionally and spend time with them. And it made the individual print more expensive. But... I had someone who had that whole machinery going and had a lot of knowledge, and so it was a it was a, a bit of a working with someone else. Um, and whenever and th- this is where I completely concur with Jeremiah. Whenever you work, it, someone else gets involved in helping your art get to a next level. It will get to a next level, be it in writing when you work with a publisher or being in your photography when you work with a printer. Um, so that would be my first suggestion. The second one is something that I experienced last year. Um, we have a laser printer here in the house, a color laser printer. And it's one of those, yeah, it's more office centered. So I wouldn't use it for any high end photography because the inks look weird a bit and the, the reflections look weird a bit. But what I, what I then thought, let me let me try something at a relatively low cost basis, and that is let me try to get some decent black and white prints out of it. So I know that thing can do I don't know six hundred DPI or maybe even more. So resolution wise, that thing should be okay. Um, and uh, and I started to play for nearly no money because I had a whole stack of paper and I had, a, had, had ink in there or toner in there. And I ended up with some really decent pictures coming out of it. Um, there's just a couple of examples with with in, with nice, uh, it doesn't really show here that well, but with nice <coughs> shadows and gradations and and resolution. And it took me I don't know, maybe 10 sheets of paper um, to try different settings and try different resolutions and figure this out. But then once I had it, I had a profile that I could use um, to send black and white photos to that printer. And for the kind of um, work that I do and the kind of style that I do, this is an absolutely viable 
way to get black and whites. Now, if we look at what Jeremiah is doing with um, with his printer, um, there, we're, then, then we're talking fine art with a ton of different inks and specialized uh, raster image processors and that kind of stuff. But it doesn't have to go that deep. It doesn't have to... Uh, the, the start into it can be much, much simpler, and I thoroughly enjoyed figuring that out. I, I think that another thing that people overlook is that size does matter. Um, there's a very, very distinct difference between looking at a postcard size image yep. and a 30 by 40 version of that image hung on a wall. Uh, the impact of the very same image will have a different emotional provocation. Um, I think if you look at Gursky's pictures on an iPhone, they will have a, a distinctly different impact on the viewer than seeing them in a museum, huge, uh, wall size and sharp. So that's, that's one thing is what is, again, the intention of those who want to have a different kind of impact that your, the relative size combination, is it, are you showing it alone? Are you showing it in combination, as we discussed last week, in a folio of pictures? One of the best investments that any iPhone user can buy, and this I attribute to Adrian's influence on my purchase <laughs> environment, was a uh, Instax printer, a square printer, which is relatively, you know, razor and razor blades. It's it's the razor. It's not very expensive, albeit the, the blades are very expensive relatively, but they are also um, addictive. And it is so fun. I've just been uh, toying around with using the Instax black and white uh, film on my black and white and and just goofing around I, I i just can't stop using it i never put in a cartridge and don't print 10 right away which is of <laughs> course what they want you to do since so i have to keep ordering these things but th that's an example of a very very simple uh camera to physical object process that's not that expensive or technically demanding a very low bar for for entry on these ones yeah it, it is oh it, it's uh, yeah it's and, a but, but fun oh yeah yeah De definitely yeah. Uh, jeremiah because i've tried the it's interesting to use the black and white instax film and an instax printer it's all uh, and and the color film as well and uh have you tried printing black and white onto the color film uh, they're just I have, yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, and looks pretty good too it does it's all right isn't it i think some, some yeah. sometimes it has a slight green tinge to it i think from uh, but, but that could be just the copy of the printer that i have um, but again the instax in iphone um software that you use has filters and it yeah. has adjustments mm -hmm. And you can oversaturate, you can undersaturate, you can lift the brightness. I find they print a little dark, so I always like to boost the brightness. Um, I find they print a little contrasty, so I like to reduce the contrast. Um, but there is uh, all of those adjustments are there. And you can make your adjustments on your iPhone using the edit. Mm -hmm. button, which most people seem to know how to do, or applying filters. And you can do the same thing on the Instax and then send it over. There is a fabulous, and we all experience that, of waiting for the image to develop. Yep. You know, the fact that it takes time builds excitement and anticipation. And when it turns out well, whatever that is to any individual, it is so satisfying to move it from uh, digital to analog um, because the object of it is so, it becomes a, a precious 
thing that you can give to people. You can frame it. You can make a mosaic out of it with multiples. Um, you can rephotograph it, which I have done on, with Polaroids to get that kind of murky um, I guess, softness that happens when you're really photographing the surface of a Polaroid. Um, so that's a very simple way of, of getting involved in printing and, and inexpensive. Um, there's a, there's, there's you know, one, one other one that's, th that's along those same lines and that's the, co uh, the, the Canon selfie S E L P H Y system, yeah. which is again, same thing, not, not as analog, same. but, um, very low bar, very low bar. So I took, I, and, when I went to Rome the, last weekend and the black and white, oh, When I went to Rome last weekend, I actually took my Canon selfie printer with me because uh, I uh, have some trips coming up this year uh, and I wanted to do that as a test. So, you know, traveling hand luggage only, taking taking the little selfie printer, um, I thought, ah, and I'll find a way to run it off a USB-C cable because then I don't need to take the power brick and stuff like that. <laughs> Sadly, it runs at 24 volts, so I did have to take the power brick. Um, but uh, the, and the other thing that was interesting is that the people at airport security really didn't know what it was. It went through. It went through, and they said, "Oh no, we have to have a look at this." And like, okay, yeah. And then they do the thing where they swab it for for explosives. Gave it back. Went through the scanner again. And like, no, we're still not quite sure. And I think it's because it's it's the density of electronics because it's a really yes. small box, com <laughs> um, compounded by the fact that they don't see very many of them going through. So I, I spent quite a long time time in airport security and um, but not in a bad way and you know, everybody was very friendly and curious about it um so uh, but having said that it did it, it is perfectly achievable to travel with something like that um and uh yeah i know that 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 then gives you a six by four print um which is which is great and is not as expensive as printing with instax it's only a, it's less than half the price i think it works out here in the uk at the moment at about 30 pence per print as opposed to instax yep. at somewhere around 70 uh, if you want to go a really cheap way i i have a printer it's just sitting on the other side of my desk and like you i won't <laughs> ruin the setup to reach for it but it, it's one of those um it prints on that coated paper really kind of I forget what what they're called. I have one of those the the the, the printer that that print you out uh, that that you get in the in the grocery store at the checkout. restaurants and that and kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. A thermal print. And, and yes. A thermal ah, printer. Right. There you go. And it's I have, only about I have one of those big. super low resolution really yes. weird quality but you can but you can get you can, you can get adhesive paper for it can. and stuff, you know? You can yeah. get lots of different paper colors yeah. and um, they are, that's, that, yeah, that's a very, that, this is the lowest bar. I think we're talking 10 or 15 bucks for a printer like that. Do you know what you want to do, though, with something like that, right? Is um, And I have a tiny little pocket uh, dye sublimation printer. It's a Kodak-branded one, but uh, yeah, it's just somebody renting the Kodak brand. It's actually not particularly good quality, but um, I wrote a little Apple shortcut that would put the tfop logo um so it'd take a photo that i would made and it would put a, and it would place that photo on a white background that was the right rectangular shape for the printer and it would add the tfop logo uh to to it and you, you basically get like a, a little printout that is sort, sort of the layout of a polaroid or an instax you know with it with a uh a, a bottom a bottom bit but when i put it up you can print the tfop logo on the bottom bit as well so that's a bit of fun and i did all of that with apple shortcuts because that was and, and but by the way just just to 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 kind of address the cost of my kind of outburst of if you're spending two thousand dollars on a budget um to, to split it in half i'd say this i i would say the same thing if you had 300 pounds to spend on capture and print i would say spend 150 pounds on a capture device used camera um you know maybe even a, le a different kind of lens for your iphone what whatever that is and find a fun printer at 150 pounds because i, I again the printing of your work getting it off the screen and i believe me i'm the last one to discourage anyone from experiencing images on screens, but getting it off the screen into your hands 
is a very, very uh, compelling experience to learn about what you took. It is very different. It's the difference between reading on an iPad, a long article or a computer screen, and there's been many studies about this, and reading it on a printed piece of paper. Our mind retains more information on a reflected surface than on a projected surface. Also, I don't know why. Yeah. Yes. Um, actually, yeah. I, yeah. Tell I, us why. Yes. Absolutely. I, I want to know why. I'm. I'm with you on that one. But the the there's one simple thing about printing, and that um, has always surprised me. Still surprises me that the that things like technical aspects of a photo, like how noisy is it, or grainy, or and 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 and, and all these kind of things sort of disappear once it's printed. The print makes every picture better in some way or another and couldn't agree that more is that is and that's an amazing experience so if you have never printed it doesn't matter how low the bar is for entry you can start with a with a ticket printer you can go up to uh to a 600 dollar uh, printer for for a home and buy very expensive special inks and learn about color management there's a huge spectrum and um doesn't matter where you start but start. Yeah. And, uh, you know, like for my process, you know, is, is on the extreme um, technical in terms of printing. I love printing. I started my career as a printer. Um, you know, I, I, I was kind of in charge of a dark room at a rare books um, facility in a university and eventually took over the dark room to print glass plates. This is maybe even before I was seriously working as a photographer. You know, I, I then kind of segued into learning how to print uh, on lithographic stones and gravure and photo then photosensitized them and did experimental work. And then holography where the printing was, you know, with lasers and coated glass. And so Printing is in my DNA. I'm really, really kind of compelled by that. And, you know, I have, you know, two major printers and some fun printers. And they, they do different things. I have a, a printer just for black and white where every ink will print a gray. The software that runs it allows me to control how much of each of the eight grays are laid down on the paper. The absorption of the paper is considered because if it's a surface coated paper or a heavily absorbent paper, the look will be significantly different in terms of how much black or how much white one leaves. Um, those are all really, uh, and that's just scratching the surface. Um, color management profiles, adapting your screen to a printer so that you're not shocked and dismayed every time you you say, oh, that's a beautifully lit, warm, golden sunset that is a green print. You know, obviously something's gone wrong in between. So learning about profiles or how printers uh, interpolate and interpret uh, the image is also uh, a, a fun learning curve because you learn about all the things that go into your image that need to be output if you if you are kind of trying to achieve a, a certain level of uh, quality um printer uh management like using an Ep the epson uh print uh application to print on epson not using your photoshop or your color management within Apple. I'll, Apple will take over a print and <laughs> you know just output it in a way that it, it you know it sees it for what it is, um, which is great for most most you know most uses. You know the Apple internal print management is, is and even Adobe's. I go totally with no print management and i then uh, adjust 
whatever I need to using RIPs, which are kind of highly developed software to address the ink flow within the paper quality on your specific printer. So the prints I make and the settings I use are specific to my work, my printer, my paper choices, the contrast and sizes. And learning that is for me as important as learning what a, uh, you know, an f-stop is or, or you know, how, how to manage the capture. Um, but of course, you, you again, have to you, learn about the f-stops first before you go into printing. No, not on your <laughs> iPhone. <you know. laughs> not on your That's iPhone. That's all AI, you know, you know AI is going to take care of it all. <laughs> all right. And then, of course, there's the entire world of, of businesses that print for you as a service and on there all is. sorts of media and all sorts of sizes yeah. and on anything that you want stuff to be printed on. And, and yes, I encourage people to find a local printer whose work is um, uh, on a kind of a higher quality and develop a relationship with them. Even for small prints, you'll learn an awful lot. Uh, there is a, a facility here in Los Angeles called POV. I'll give them a plug. And they do all the specialized printing for me. Like, for example, I am preparing uh, a show for Paris in 24, and the work is all printed on glass. And it's printed on the reverse of the glass. Uh, and so these are specialized printers and I, I work with the printer so that no highlights are printed on the glass. I will, I will kind of paint on the, the back. I will actually gild the back of the glass so that the highlights are all gilded and you see the image through the glass. And these are only six inches by six inches. They're very small. They're very precious objects. Um, they're almost sort of daguerreotype in feel, but they sparkle in there. So working with those guys, uh, you know, over some years, they've printed on metal for me. They've printed on all kinds of, they'll, they'll print on anything you want, pretty much. They have all manner of things. And they are also interested in pushing the limits of what is possible uh, in terms of laying down inks, almost like uh, paint. Um, over and over again to build up surfaces and texture. So it's, um, and again, there, there's such a great learning curve working with these professionals, uh, whether they just do simple, um, you know, image to paper, or whether they're kind of pushing the limits of what is a print, um, can teach you a lot about how to manage your own stuff. And then what files do you bring to them and how are those files managed? You know, is it 300 DPI, 250 DPI, 72 DPI? What, how does that look when, when you adjust the, you know, the quality of your output? And again, those are things for me that not, not for everybody, but for me are as important as the capturing of these images. I'm and starting to use an I'm starting, Jeremiah, to get a sense of uh, the depth that goes behind your one word answer at the top of the show uh, of, yes, we should be spending more on our printing. Um, I, I think I, I would love to see more printing. I, you know, I'm clearly, you know, the, the effort that you put in and the, 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 uh, the experimenting and the research and the practice that you put in is, uh, is way beyond anything that I've done. Uh, I, but I but I take some inspiration from it, right? I take some inspiration from it that actually that there's a whole world out there that I would probably enjoy, and uh, you know, it could be could be really creative and could help me get to a, a different place, right? Creatively, which I think is awesome. So, uh, so ha have we solved this well, question? Have we have we answered this question? Is the answer by the way <laughs> exhaustively? Let, let, let me. Let, let, <clears throat> Let me add to that is that there is a feedback loop that happens so that what, whatever and however you manage your printing, you know, and I, I certainly am not pushing people to do <laughs> the insanity that I do to output the prints that I do. Believe me, I'm not. This is something that is 
you know, it's like people who are tinkering with cars. You know what I mean? They like wrenching on motors and what. That that could be nothing could be further from my particular interest. I don't mind driving them, but I don't I I don't have the time to learn how to take apart an engine. Um, I'm fascinated by this, and what I find is. I get inspiration from the deep dive into printing that feeds back, oh, I'm going to try now to take a photo that works in that that workflow to pull out this kind of tonality or this kind of abstraction or this kind of hyper reality, whatever, whatever I happen to be into at that time. And this feedback loop of capture even subject, time of day, lighting, what I'm using, and the output, however that is, on a Instax or a dye transfer glass print or you know a thermal print, I, I don't value one beyond another. I, I you know what I mean, it, but it all feeds the creative process. So that's really what I'm trying to get at with people who are deciding based on your question. How much should we, quote, spend, given a budget on photography, should we put it all into lenses, camera bags, and, you know, cameras? Or should we think more laterally about, well, yeah, maybe I should look at it holistically um, and see what happens. Cool. All right. All right. Let's I move on another to print now. the... <laughs> <laughs> okay, or or you find someone who does it for you. Um, like here, here's an example. Um, here's a bigger print on yeah. uh, on an a, 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 a aluminum sandwich kind of board. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and I those, uh, yeah. and uh, this this takes me straight to my pick, which is um, for us, eight nine years ago. I was in. St. Louis, and we took a little trip down to Kansas, I think, to Miller's Professional Imaging, which is a big photo lab kind of thing. They print wall art, they print on, they print books, they print all sorts of things for you. And there's a video of it, because my friend John uh, shot video. So I had unprecedented access to the whole, well, it's a big hall full of really fun machines and uh, a ton of people making things from from yeah from printing from laminating from making books from uh cutting and and assembling and it was so much fun to talk to these people and it gives you a very good idea of what goes into making these kind of things in a in a more of a um industrial kind of style but still i mean they are It's it's one one of the labs that do these kind of things, and the video is linked in the show notes. So that was that was very impressive to see um, what is possible today, or what was possible nine years ago. And I'm pretty sure things have yeah. gone even further than that since then. So have a look behind the scenes. Of, yes, it looks interesting. Of of I mean they. They, they they do like for weddings they do books with gilded edges and that kind of stuff wow. it's wild it's really wild all right um who brought this one An oh that's AI me chat. um uh it turns out ai is dead never mind um the uh <laughs> so so uh, this this could could be anything um uh it just happens to be uh a web article on nine to five mac uh that suggests that we've hit peak ai um that's peak Already? ai in terms of photo apps just to be <laughs> clear um uh mm. not not uh not things like uh chat gpt or something like that but the sort of phone apps that you get that use ai to make fun stuff happen um apparently according to one market uh an analytics uh, and measurement system uh that that had peaked late last year uh, those kinds of apps and people are less interested now than they were so i offer this as an example that uh the pendulum swings both ways right as we all know about most things in life and uh maybe the pendulum is starting to swing the opposite way now who knows 
You haven't seen no, anything I, yet. I would say if anything, maybe <laughs> maybe we're hitting we're hitting peak AI as a headline, and we won't call it AI anymore. It will just be, no. hey, use this filter, or yeah. this is this is your your wedding look. You know what I mean? We are but we are AI is we are looking at the traditional hype curve, and that is um, it overshoots yeah. at the beginning. It'll drop down, and now and then it'll come back. Give it a couple of years, and I yeah. think uh, if I recall rightly, the Gartner, the uh, the sort of corporate analytics, firm the Gartner hype curve. has a has a thing called a hype curve. And I remember, I think if I correctly remember, yeah. uh, after you get the the extreme hype of something, you you descend into what they call the the trough of disillusionment, yes. <laughs> which I think is a yeah. lovely phase phrase um so yeah we're approaching that right now. we're approaching the trough <laughs> of disillusionment for ai yeah. and it's interesting how fast this went right Amazing. yeah very much though, the, though things that burn the brightest that... the things that burn the brightest you know burn out more quickly don't they so. no yeah. they, it'll come but back though, it'll, it'll be big <laughs> though I, I i feel that people who have been using ai um for uh, creative purposes are less inclined to hashtag their work as AI photography or AI art because it used to be, you know, created with Photoshop. I mean, do we say that? No. You know, we, we need to another find, great hashtag, yeah. We need to find a new uh, euphemism for this kind of art, as as we did for inkjet prints, because they didn't sell well, because it was um, implying that you press a button and out comes a print. And yeah. uh, then they invented the word gicle, which mm. is the French word for to spray so um, but it means inkjet and the difference between an inkjet and a G clay print is a few hundred dollars so um, we are going to have to invent a new name for AI art that makes it sound much much better and then yeah then we're or, on our or way. just ignore it um, and speaking of AI yeah. art um, Jeremiah you ah. brought us something that looks surprising that that looks suspiciously like AI art it does and on first blush, I thought, oh, this is a very interesting AI artist. But so we're no. looking at some black and white art with smoke and steam and smoke coming out of things. And it, yeah, it looks surreal. It does look surreal. His process is such that he kind of travels the internet visually, captures all manner of images, um, up to say even 40 in a single image, and then combines them in layers and adjusts them to create these almost in a way as a collage. So he does not use AI at all. These are visually constructed based on found imagery. So, so traditional, in, in air quotes, traditional Photoshop. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> These are traditional surreal photos, um, but his work is really impressive. I saw it at Freeze LA last week, and I, I was really captivated. What's his name? By his work. You know, I, I don't know. I forget. Okay, well, we'll, we'll figure that one out. It's amazing stuff. I, li I really like it. I, I think really his like name it. is, yeah, is, is Jim Kazanjan, I think. That's it. There we go. Wow. Yeah. Okay. And he was in a, gal a gallery in Latin America. Mm -hmm. Awesome nice. stuff. All right. Yeah. So, are we all going to be professional printers soon? Wow. I, I've been enthusiastic amateur, I think. I don't... Uh, um, Nothing wrong with that. Well, hey, that's why I do photography. Start with so. Instax. Can't beat Instax. Oh, I love uh, the Instax. You know I Instax, love the Instax. Instax, selfie, your laser printer, your yeah. ink, your office inkjet might be surprisingly good and for photography. Thermal. Give it a try. Don't look down your nose at thermal printing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Or get one of those cheap thermal printers. Yeah, this is... I have one that looks like a kitty cat because it's Excellent. made for kids. Yeah. Anyway, we <laughs> are going like to eyeball. be back soon with more... Until then, everyone, take care, uh, find us online, and bye-bye. Bye.
You've been listening to The Future of Photography. Subscribe to the show wherever you get your other podcasts. Find the show notes and more information at thefutureofphotography.com. Thank you.